Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for Minitab. This screencast covers section 8.3 Chi-squared goodness of fit test for one sample. The Chi-squared goodness of fit test works on count data and asks if the distribution of counts between three or more categories is what you would have expected. It is obvious therefore that we have to inform the program as to what we would expect for the number of cases we would find in each category. We do this by telling the program the proportion of the sample we would expect to fall in each category expressed as a fraction. For example, in column 2 of this table, we see the breakdown of the number of households in Worcester City in terms of the number of dependent children within them. City councils often need such data to plan expenditure for the future, and one of the questions that can be asked is if Worcester is typical of England and Wales in general. While the figures from England and Wales are given in column 3, and in column 4 we can express this number as a fraction that gives the proportion of the cases in each group. In column 5 we express this fraction as a decimal. These are our expected proportions. We can now use the proportions given in column 5 to allow the program to calculate expected values so we can test the hypothesis that there is no difference between the distribution of dependent children in households in Worcester compared to the expected distribution found in England and Wales. So let's do the test. I have entered the data into Minitab. Column 1 are just the labels of the categories. Column 2 contains the number of cases in each category. Column 3 contains the expected proportions. To do the test, we track up to Stat and click. Down to Tables, a submenu opens, and down to Chi-square, Goodness of Fit. We now need to tell Minitab which variables to use. I'm going up to click in the Observe Counts box. I'm going to select column C2, which is the number of households, and down to the Select button. I have the option of entering the category names. In this case, it's column C1, and I'm going to press the Select button. You can see that the radio button for equal proportions is already selected. I actually want to click the Specific Proportions radio button. A box opens with our cursor already placed in it. I'm going to select column C3, which contains our expected proportion data, and press the Select button. I can now press OK. The results appear in the Session window box. We can see that Minitab has produced a table containing our category names, the observed cases associated with each category, the proportions that we entered, from which it has then calculated a set of expected values. It has then done the chi-squared test, and the p-value is so small that it doesn't show up in the first three decimal places of the probability score. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. So such a small p-value suggests that this is a highly significant result. We can therefore conclude that there is a significant difference between the distribution of dependent children in households in Worcester City compared to the expected distribution found in England and Wales. What if you do not know what the expected values or proportions are? Then the default position is to expect the same number of cases in each category. This data taken from Table 8.1 shows the number of counts of holly leaf miners at three adjacent height zones on holly trees. There is no prior expectation of what we should find, so in this case we assume that we should find equal numbers in each zone. That is, since we have three categories, we would expect a third of the insects to be found in each zone. So let's do the test. As you can see, I've entered the data from table 8.1 into Minitab. In fact, I've entered it twice. Columns 1 and 2 contain the data as a table. Column 4 contain it in an observation format, where each line represents a single observation. Minitab can handle both of these. So how do we do the test? We track up to Stat and click. We get a submenu. We track down to Tables. A second submenu appears. Track down to Chi-square, Goodness of Fit, one variable, and click. A window opens. Now I need to tell Minitab which variables I want it to use. First of all, I'm going to go up to Observe Counts and click in the box. The variables that Minitab thinks I can use appears in the left-hand box. I'm going to use Count. I'm going to click on it to select it and press the Select button. I now need to enter the category names. In this case, it's Height. I click on the Select box and we selected it. 
you can see that equal proportions has already been selected. That's the test we want to do, so let's press OK. We can see that Minitab has given us both a graph and a table summarizing our category and expected data. In the graph, the expected values are in orange, and you can see that they are all the same because Minitab has calculated an average. At the bottom of the session window, you can see that Minitab has also given us a p-value of 0.000. .000. A probability value so small that it doesn't show up in the first three decimal places suggests that there is a highly significant difference between the number of holly leaf miners found within each zone of the tree. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.